What's up, guys? Diablo 4 Summer Server Slam, May 12th to the 14th. For all of those that did not see the dev stream yesterday, it was absolutely fantastic. They released the server, excuse me, not server, but all the, the server slam details and things that are coming um, to Diablo 4 in the end game. So we're very, very, very excited about this. So let's go to news. Let's go to the brand new stuff. Help us get geared up for launch. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few things um, that they kind of like gave a lot of details to yesterday and uh, some stuff that we didn't really like talk a whole bunch about, but we're going to go over just a few things. Okay, I'm going to try to make this quick and simple for all of those that are there. So the big and most exciting thing is the server slam. Okay, server slam, May 12th to the 14th. They are bringing back the beta so we are able to play okay may 12th 12 p.m to may 14th boom it's a done deal okay now a few things with this i do want to mention is that with the server slam it's the same act okay same act one it is the same world boss ashava which you'll be able to fight nine times and then now you're only able to get your characters to level 20 instead of 25 so I do want to mention those. Those are huge things that they have changed. Uh, they really want us to have a big stress test for this. So that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So let's scroll down and kind of look at the, the next few things. Um, we do want to mention that they are giving us the server slam rewards as you play. So for those who weren't able to play in early access or the open beta, once you were able to get to level 25 and defeat the world boss, you were going to get the uh, reaching the Kozova shot or however you say that with one character. You got the beta wolf pack cosmetic item. And now you're able to earn these again. But if you defeat a Shava at level 20 in server slam, you're going to get this item here. It's this item right here. Okay. It's this item right here. It's just the horn for your mount in the season, which is really, really cool. Um, I mean, it's just, this is supposed to be a horn from Ashava, which is kind of cool. It is what it is, but that is an, an additional bonus cosmetic that you're going to get for, for playing in this new beta. So those are the big things right off the bat. Um, Cry for Ashava, you're going to be able to fight her nine times. It starts at noon, 24 hours after the... 24 hours after the beta goes live and then it, she's going to respawn every three hours after that so every three hours after she comes online you're going to be able to fight her nine times and that's it so and i'm pretty sure that they have nerfed the whole instance of teleporting back to town and coming back in to get a new instance so heads up for that okay another few things that we have to talk about for these notes um, which is just, I mean, they, they show you how to download it. And then there's the developer stream if you guys really want to talk about it. But a few things that I do want to mention is that they really did a good job about the legendaries, which I think are absolutely amazing. The legendaries that they, um, that they added to this were just really, really cool. So they added a bunch of the legendaries and not only the legendaries, but the uniques that they added on. And I'm trying to find... A really cool picture on this but um, what we will do is we'll come back in here and I'll showcase this and just find them so you guys can see it was really really cool uh, to see some of the cool. uniques uh, and what they have here so these are some of the ancestral items or not ancestrals but the legendaries that they showcase which is just really cool these look good you're gonna find more of these once they unlock at nightmare mode you can find a few of these during um, excuse me. You can't find some of these during uh, the first two world tier difficulties, but you're going to find more of these once you hit Nightmare. And then you have your ancestral unique items, which you're going to unlock uh, at, uh, excuse me, Torment mode. This is the only way to get these is you have to get to Torment mode. But these uniques are not only a very rare drop, but they're very, very strong. For example, your Reign of Arrows is always imbued with all imbuements at once. So that means Reign of Arrows has Poison, Shadow, and Cold Frost, which I think it's cold. 
at all times, which is insane. Fireball now bounces as it travels, exploding each time it hits the ground, but its explosion deals 65% less damage. So like all of these are just really, really strong uniques. Death Blow creates a shockwave. Enemies who die from this effect reset it. You gain stealth and do more stuff with um, Shred. So all of the ancients and legendaries I think that they have is just really good. It's going to make grinding in the end game worth it. It's going to make it feel very rewarding, which is the whole thing that we want inside of Diablo or an ARPG. We want to be able to grind end game and make it worth it. So you're going to be able to just go after these things and just farm them and try to get them and just work towards something on your builds. So these are going to be very, very, very powerful. Another big thing that I think that they really, um, really did good on was the the glyphs for the Paragon board, as well as the Paragon board itself. And having all these different nodes, the common ones, the magic ones, and the rare ones, as well as the legendary ones, be really worth it. It's going to be really unique to use the glyphs inside here and just customize your character to such a degree. It's going to be so different than other versions of those characters. In this example with crackling energy damage, you're going to be able to build a crackling energy build a lot just based on the nodes. And it's going to be so much different because crackling energy to me was very low, low like skill ceiling as far as the damage that it could do. But with nodes, it's going to be fantastic. So I think the Paragon board is just really, really good. And then with the glyphs, you can get powerful glyphs from Nightmare Dungeons and be able to level those up to make your Paragon boards very, very powerful. And then as you're going through your Paragon boards, you have additional requirements. So having 25 dexterity when you're using this glyph is going to give you the additional damage here if the requirements are met. So it's going to allow you to navigate the Paragon board in such a unique way because you're going to go and you're going to look at nodes and look at glyphs and go, okay, I want this glyph. It really helps out my build and I want the bonus. So which, which ones do I need to take that are dexterity so I can reach this limit by the time I get there? So the glyphs, Paragon board, the whole thing and customizing is just going to be so good. It's not as complicated as PoE, but it's more complicated than Diablo 3. And I think it's going to be well worth it. It's To me, everything doesn't look too complicated. So that is something else that they really, really got right. We do got to talk about the class changes because we got into a pretty big debate about this. Overall, I want to stress again that I think these are fine. Um, you know, I really hope that these will really help make adjustments and they do some more adjustments before I release. But overall, as a whole, I think those, those are okay. The next big dub that they did and probably the most complained thing was the backtracking. So backtracking in here was pretty dumb overall. And I think it's very, very good that they fixed this. So being able to come down here and then have to backtrack here, backtrack here and stuff. And now they fixed it to where now you're going to be able to just do like now we're going to do this. We're going to go. We hit all three of these, go up, hit this one around and we're done. And backtracking is gone. OK, another big stress that I want to add to these is there's going to be some dungeons where you have quests like kill all the monsters in here. Right. And then but you're going to go through a map like this in a dungeon and there's going to be one monster in this corner that you didn't kill because it was just sitting there and you missed it. So now what they have done to fix that is once you hit a certain threshold of zombies that are killed or monsters that are killed in the dungeon, the rest are going to come after you, which is hopefully going to help negate having to backtrack and find that one lonely spider that was sitting in a corner. So I think that's a big dub and I really do hope it helps. But other than that, guys, those were the main things that they had talked about. Um, and then of course you have your rewards. Um, here you're going to be getting the title, the early Voyager, the beta wolf pack, and then the cry for Shava mount trophy uh you just have to do defeat this with one level 20 character a shava schedule is every three hours after um 9 a.m pdt and then her final spawn is may 14th at 9 a.m pdt so big big dub here for blizzard i think they did a lot of things uh really really well and there's some really cool things that 
I think are going to be good for the game. So I just wanted to go over all these in these kind of notes and just kind of detail some stuff and outline probably my most favorite things from the dev stream that happened yesterday. So if you guys did enjoy today's video and have a lot of hope and praise for the changes that are coming and uh, especially to the end game, I think it's going to be really, really good. So make sure to like the video, comment down below. What do you guys, uh, your thoughts are? I will link the dev, the dev stream down in the description if you guys have missed that and want to go watch that. Um, and as always, stay game. See you guys in the next one. Peace.